Does the government exist to work for us, or do we exist to serve the government? Do the people we hire to run the government have a duty to do the best job at the least cost and preserve the most freedom? Or should they pay for substandard, unneeded services? Tonight, government and political courage. We're at a fundamental crossroads in American government today. We see great political courage from governors like Chris Christie in New Jersey, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, and John Kasich in Ohio. We see compromise from Republican leaders in Congress, like Speaker John Boehner and Majority Leader Eric Cantor. And yet their jobs are similar, their crises are comparable, and their needs are daunting. First, to the states. All three of those states that are at the center of a firestorm over the ability of their governors to run those state governments as if they were businesses. Since they are governments, their first obligation is to preserve freedom. And that means financial freedom as well as civil liberties. All three of these governors have inherited huge budget deficits caused by too much spending in the past, too much giving in to the demands of public sector unions, too much fiscal mismanagement at the hands of both political parties. What have those states done in the past? They promised to pay more money than they have. And in the case of unions, these states have given away the store. Here's what happens. Every three years or so, the collective bargaining agreement between these states and their employees comes up for renewal. In the past, when they have come up for renewal, the governors then in office have given sweetheart deals to the unions in return for votes. Now, just think about how inappropriate that is. In each state, New Jersey, Wisconsin, and Ohio, Democratic and Republican governors have given away the money paid by taxpayers to unions in return for votes. Not in return for quality work, but for votes. Some of the, those giveaways have been breathtaking. Guaranteed life work, called tenure, for all teachers after just three years on the job. Health coverage for teachers from day one on the job to the day of death. A pension for life starting at age 41 at 80 percent of the highest salary for cops and all this at the cost of taxpayers with zero zero contribution from the workers well along came the recession in 2008 and along came three governors who are not about to do the same as their predecessors and along came the unions and now we're at this crossword roads where will the states go if their governors hold firm, they will go to fiscal sanity. They will not purchase more services than they need, and the governments will make do with less. If they go the way to the unions, then the states are headed for disaster. Fortunately for the taxpayers of these three states, they have governors who are standing 10 feet tall in defense of the taxpayers' money. Too bad the same cannot be said of the Republican leadership in the Congress. They are faced with a debt of $14 trillion and a president who wants to borrow $2.5 trillion more in just the next year. Congressman Ron Paul, Senator Rand Paul, Congressman Connie Mack, Senator Jim DeMint have all said no. No to more borrowing. No to spending more than you take in. No to a bloated government, two-thirds of which isn't even authorized by the Constitution. But not the Republican leadership. They want to let the president borrow and spend. They're afraid to cut from social programs and from defense. They want the same old borrow and spend just as in the past, but it's their version of borrow and spend. Where are the Chris Christie's and Scott Walker's and John Kasich's in Congress? Not in the leadership, that's for sure. America, we need courage in politics today. We need public officials like these tough three governors who will do the right thing. What is courage? Is it freedom from fear? No. It is staring fear in the face and proceeding forward right into it. Courage is telling the president, just like the governors are telling the unions, no. Fear is business as usual. Tomorrow on